Hi guys. So today I'll be working on the picket fence that is behind me here. Um, it's been sitting there for close to a year by now. I had gotten it from a friend who didn't want it anymore. So basically free wood, which is always a good thing. I have a few ideas that I want to do with it. Um, so I thought I'd take you with me as I work on it. Um, I probably won't get rid of the whole pile in this video, but I just wanted to make a few projects and maybe give you guys some ideas of picket fence projects in case you're looking to do something like this. So let's get right to it. We've been getting a lot of rain recently, so a lot of these boards are too wet to use, but I thought if I dig through the pile, maybe I'll find some that are dry enough or that I can at least dry out pretty quickly here in the sun. I have about five boards up here in the shop that I had pulled off um, earlier this summer. Never got around to doing anything with them, but they're nice and dry. So I'm gonna start out by using those and then hopefully my other ones that I just pulled off will dry. For now, I'm just kind of measuring and eyeing, see what looks best. Uh, the first thing I wanna make is a little wooden box or crate of sorts. gluing and pinning these together. I still have a section of a Jenny Lind crib and this is why I keep these things, guys. I get some hash about this, not from you guys, but probably more from John and um, some of my other family. Like, they think I always collect all these things. What are you ever going to do with them? But in times like this, it comes in so handy because this will make the perfect little handle for my crate here. The next thing I want to make is a candle holder of sorts. You guys know I like candle holders. Uh, this would be to probably hang on a wall, although you wouldn't have to, but I'm going to fix them to be hung on the wall. And I'm going to see if I can make them the perfect size to fit our small candles, uh, although they might possibly look okay with the pint jar size too. Kind of like a wall sconce of sorts, a little shelf to hold a candle. Very simple, just cutting off the top of a board and then adding the little shelf. After I pinned this, I thought it definitely needs a few screws in the back since it'll be holding a candle just for safety. Make sure the little shelf stays in place.
Here I'm making a cutting board using that fancy uh, piece for the center, kind of for the handle, and then two more pieces to get my width. I cut a section of the fence in half and these pieces I plan to use to hold my cutting board pieces together. Uh, it would be on the back side and at this point I plan to just pin them and nail them with my air nailer but if I see it's not like strong enough I can always add a few screws. I'm testing to see whether my little nails will go all the way through. I of course don't want them showing on the other side but I think I should be okay with these. These are an inch and a fourth. I'm just eyeing it here to get it even, but if this was a board that I was going to sell, I would probably measure uh, just to make sure everything's nice and even. Here I'm using a boiled linseed oil to preserve this wood. I did a little bit of research and I found that a lot of people say you should use a raw linseed oil to do this versus the boiled kind. But since I'll just be using this board for decorating purposes, I'll probably just leave it. But in the future, if I make cutting boards, I'll probably use either a raw linseed oil or just another food safe mineral oil. The next few items I'm going to make are signs. Very simple. The first one especially, just one piece of wood. I'm going to think this fancy part of the wood here is kind of like an arrow pointing and I'll probably put the words maybe pumpkin patch uh, on the sign. I think it would fit for fall. Kind of like a sign you'd see, you know, directing people to the pumpkin patch. I have something new I want to try uh, as a top coat for this little sign. Uh, it's Rustoleum brand chalked paint and it is a matte clear. So I'm going to take it outside and spray that on, see how it looks. I really like how this finish turned out. Uh, just a nice matte top coat. Um, I'll just lightly sand the surface to make it nice and smooth before I add my decal. Since I'll have plenty of just straight pieces left over from my stash of picket fence, um, as far as I won't have enough of the fancy design to make things with, I'm just going to make a straight sign using three pieces of wood, similar to what I did with the cutting board, fastening them together in the back with you know another piece of wood that I cut in half.
I'm applying a whitewash mixture to this wood, basically just half water and half paint mixed together. I wanted to show you guys a trick when applying decals to a rough surface, kind of like old wood like this. Um, all you have to do is just heat the vinyl a bit with a hair dryer and your words or design will kind of melt almost into the cracks. It will look like actual paint. Um, it's pretty neat. I hope I can pick it up here in the video what it does. So initially when I started working with this picket fence, I thought, oh, I'll do maybe three or four different uh, things. And of course now I can't stop. It's such a fun wood to work with. And this morning I'm creating just another little item here, uh, probably a little hook board of sorts. Probably put it together the same way as the cutting board. I'll just make it shorter and maybe add some glass knobs and maybe a word or something. Now I was going to apply a coat of like clear coat over this piece before I added the word and I forgot. So I'm going to actually apply it over the vinyl and everything. I get a lot of questions about that. Is it okay to you know spray over vinyl? So I guess we'll find out. So after this piece has dried and I sprayed over the vinyl word here, I don't think I do it again. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like uh, I just kind of pulled it up just a little bit. I think I could probably take the hair dryer and just go over the word again, kind of melt it down into the wood, but I was always afraid that would happen if you know someone would spray a clear coat over vinyl. It would almost maybe bring it out more and make it look less like it's painted in. Again, maybe just my imagination, but um, I don't think I'd do it again. I didn't get a video of this, but I ended up adding another piece of wood along the bottom edge of this piece. When I hung it up the first time, it ended up not hanging you know, straight on the wall. It needed that extra support along the bottom.
working with this picket fence was one of the more fun things that I've done recently. Uh, it was just such an easy wood to work with. Hopefully I gave you guys some ideas in case you have some old picket fence that you want to be rid of, uh, need some ideas on things to make with it. And I know there's many, many more ideas out there, but these are just a few. Even though this video was geared to give you guys ideas on what can be done with picket fence, we of course are gonna use all of ours up and turn it into these little decorations and sell it on Etsy. So if you don't have any picket fence yourself and you're interested in any of these items, make sure to check them out on my Etsy shop. Not quite sure what kind of amounts we'll have for you know the different items, probably kind of divided up. Um, of course, we'll probably have more straight boards left over than the fancy part of the boards, but we'll see how that all works out. But make sure to check it out on my Etsy shop. As always, I hope you're having a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.